You've made it to the finale. This is the last one, finally. And uh, I got to admit that I really struggled with how to put this lesson together. I was just telling Carl before we started filming. Uh, you know, I, I didn't know whether to go over our list of words and, you know, uh, dig into it that way or to try and, um, you know, sum it all up, you know, try to figure out how it all worked together. And I guess what I came up with was sort of a combination of both. Uh, so um, hopefully it works out for all of you. Interesting study. We could go on and on and on. So uh, there really could be several more sessions without any problem. To, uh, yeah. to, and, you know, we still wouldn't run out of conversations to have and scripture to read about this this subject in in the word because mm. really from genesis to revelations it's all about our covenant with the lord yeah so all right so well, let's get started with a little review so what are the main points of the abrahamic covenant the old covenant and the you know the law uh, and the new covenant that you remember from our last two weeks of study. Main main points would probably be the the promise of descendants that mm -hmm. that God could honor His presence with them and, and that they could be uh, underneath His His authority and His government. You're talking about the Abrahamic, yeah, Abraham, yeah, yeah. and the promise of a land to, that that they could develop to be a nation that was you know, ideally that would be modeling what a the theocratic nation would be, a nation under God's government, right. under God's protection, under God's provision. And they had, that was God's intent, but mm -hmm. the, the final thing that needed to draw that out would be the, the obedience of the people. And that's where, that's where it all fell apart. That's what, it's you know, kind of funny as you were saying that, I just remembered uh, that was William Penn's intent for the United States too, did you know that? Uh, so to be see, uh, under uh, God, yeah, you know? theological mm -hmm. government under God. All right, mm -hmm. so uh, it was passed on to who? The, the, uh, the, well, Abraham's descendants, Isaac and Jacob, and, and Jacob's descendants, the you know, tribes Israel. of Israel. Right. So, and it was to be perpetual a, a covenant to not only even even descendants by blood, just anyone that was in there within their household. You within know, their household, outside right. of their household that came in, they were to be participants in the covenant. Too. Right. Right. So it uh, was to go on and on and on. And so also, you know, that he was promised a seed, you said, and that seed we discovered later was Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah, the because blessing that, to all the nations. That's blessing to yeah. all the nations right. through Jesus Christ. Okay, so how about the old covenant? The law. Uh, the law, it wasn't, it wasn't made to be, to frustrate them, but it was made to show them and remind them that short, falling short of the glory of God had to be dealt with. And so the continual sacrificing of animals, the preciousness of life, and a, sub, you know, a substitute for, for what uh, God intended to do, and that they had to be offered continually, but they're it was a cleansing, but it wasn't a removal. So it had right. to be done over and over and over again. And even it did not remove sin, but it actually gave a remembrance of sin. Every, every time an animal was sacrificed as a sin offering, it was to remind the people that they're falling short of the glory of God. They're right. not meeting the expectations of God. And the whole system leading to one who yeah. would absolutely meet the Mexican, you know, on our behalf. Christ would you, can, be. you can read about it in Ephesians 3 where they talk about how um, I think uh, they translated in some uh, instances to tutor that the law was meant to be a tutor for the people of Israel. Yeah, that's and, another for, translates to school, a schoolmaster. A schoolmaster, mm -hmm. yeah. And actually, if you look up the word that's been translated there and you dig into it, you find out that it really goes back to I, I forget the full word, but I know that it's been uh, cut down to page 
basically. And, okay. and, and what a, a page actually was is a person who was, it was their responsibility to make sure that that student got to school. Yeah, and almost like, did, like a nanny or something. Yeah, and, and did nanny, the yeah. things that they were supposed to do. Yeah. And got, you know, so they, they were in charge of helping them do what they were supposed to do at school. Yeah. To, to get educated. To That's learn. really applicable and when and you think about right it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Follow, follow the law, follow right. my commandments. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, all right, so uh, in the new covenant, God promised Israel when they suffered for breaking the old covenant. He uh, promised them a new covenant, right? It was in right. the midst of them suffering right. that he promised them a new covenant. Hmm. Yeah, even in, prophesied by Jeremiah, what it would, would be that it would be written, written upon their hearts, and right. you know, it would be, you know, ever it would be like implanted within them, and even the desire to want to follow the law, right. there had to be a change of heart, a, a new heart. You yeah, know? and Ezekiel had told us that he was going to. Put his spirit. Yeah, he was going to give them spirit, a new spirit. Yes, right. Yeah, Amen. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So, uh, and it, it offered a forgiveness of the sins, rather than just a covering. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, uh, so. Uh, oh, and he said that uh, they would be his people, and he would be their God. Right. From this point on. All right. Back to what? Yeah. What? What he originally intended. He wanted. You know. I think he, he talked about I want to you be an example to all the earth what you know what it is like for a people to have God over them in in not only just in his presence but actually to be ruling over them and no right. one rules more perfectly than God you know over his people but Israel just wouldn't have it and their humanity and it's not you right. know not to fault them because I know my humanity does not follow God to the to the yeah, letter right. you know exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, is they, it's His grace, you know, unmerited favor, His uh, promise to help us to forgive yeah. us of those transgressions. Right. You know, uh, we're I think we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but <laughs> one of the things that uh, we found out in the Old Covenant is that uh, when they did that atonement once a year, it was only for sins that they didn't know they committed. Okay. You yeah. know, it was, you know, and the sins that they, they committed on purpose, they knew what they were doing. There was no forgiveness for those sins. And they were to be exercised from the, from the group. Mm. Hmm. All right, so in Hebrews 8, uh, it quotes Jeremiah's promise of the new covenant and um, said they made it, when they made the new covenant, the old covenant would become obsolete, mm -hmm. right? So it also says that Jesus is the high priest in heaven. And in heaven, he's the high priest of what? The true, true, the, the true, true tabernacle, tabernacle yeah. and, and 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 the new, the new covenant, you know. Yeah, yeah. So let's look at our uh, diagram of the tabernacle that we have here. <clears throat> what was the what? What would you say the purpose of the tabernacle was? It was a place of worship. A right? place of worship, a place in, in their midst where God could be in their midst, and they could um they could operate, you know, it, right. means of worship before Him. When you when you entered in, what was the first thing that you came when you entered through the door? What was the first thing that you came to? The the altar for 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 sacrifices. Altar, yeah, for sacrifices, right? All right, and uh, what did you do it for? You, Sac what what was it for? It was for sacrifice. Offer, offering for sin, yeah. for, offering, for transgressions. Yeah. Sacrifice for, for that's where they sacrificed the animal and collected the blood, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh next was the brass labor. Right? What was it for? Just for the priest to wash, they sort of just to wash the this the be just the sin of just being in the world and that right. and, and having to uh you know, deal deal with sin. They they you know they them being the ones that uh, performed the sacrifices and and what it symbolized. So it's almost like that sin 
almost like clung to them also they had to wash wash that away before going into this even you know even not into the presence of god but just into the service of god yeah because the holy place wasn't the presence of god right. yet it was just into the service it was where the only the priest could go into the holy place right the holy of holies was part of the holy place but uh just to get into the holy place the priest had to be cleansed yeah because it was washed. all it was yeah. all service under god, everything under god right. you know mm-hmm. all right so next was the holy place so according to hebrews 9 1 what was the holy place i'm not sure for the verse it's just where where the you know activity of worship went on and uh, well, nine one says it was the earthly sanctuary okay yep yeah. so so what did we learn about the holy place in verses one through seven you might want to pull your scripture out if you don't have it uh, in verses nine one and two it was called the earthly sanctuary and was for divine worship seven one through seven yeah we're, we're just going to look at one through seven but uh well i'll tell you what the thing a couple things i marked down was uh uh verses nine one and two it says it was the earthly sanctuary and it was for divine worship and only the priest could enter into the holy place mm-hmm. nine three it said that behind the second veil was the holy of holies mm-hmm. okay so and uh nine two through five it's it basically talks about how it contained all the articles instructed by god for worship okay one through Mm -hmm. five it contained all those things so next was the holy of holies or most holy place now were the two how were the two places separated by the veil real thick veil woven i think the color blue scarlet and red perhaps right. but it was a woven thick some people say it could have been as much as a foot thick oh really yeah, yeah. and it was just a wall of separations that got access into the very presence of god was yeah. was not available to common people and even to the priest only once right. a year right. and only right. the high priest could go in yeah. And he had to go in with blood. That was a crucial yeah, thing, you know, exactly. blood, of, blood of the animal sacrifice. Yeah, and he had to be cleansed. And, uh, you know, we've all, you know, we've heard that, you know, they tied a rope around his ankle in case when he went in there, he there was something he forgot and mm-hmm. didn't atone for him before going in because uh, he would die in the presence of the Lord if he wasn't cleansed. Right. And so they could, if he died, they could pull him back out yeah. without yeah, going did you even The tassels and like tassels with bells on yeah. the bottom of his garment so they could they could hear movement, an indication that everything was still okay. Right. They could hear, hear him moving about, you know, yeah. inside, the, inside the curtain. Yep. So the first covenant is a reference to the old covenant or the law, right? Right. You know, some of the things that we read in the, in one through seven, and it had regulations for worship that were instructed by God to Moses how the worship was supposed to take place. Okay, and it, and it was a place of holiness, right? You had to you had to be holy. You had to be clean. You had to be in order to enter in to these places and the holy place and the holy of holies the most holy place were underneath the tent and the rest of the uh tabernacle was not they were it was all open open area would 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 you think that if you weren't coming to offer sacrifice or something is it it wasn't necessary a gathering place or anything you you had to have business right to enter in you could have I been so, outside yeah. the outer courts even was the more like social area but right. you just went you it wasn't to go in and hang out you had to be yeah well, I, to, I don't think you could hang out in the holy place at all if you weren't a priest I, you couldn't go past the outer court okay, if you weren't yeah. a priest yeah so and you know i'm not sure the outer court I would have to do some more study on it. I'm not sure whether you could even enter into that if you weren't a priest. Unless, yeah, or unless, unless you had unless business. You you like an offer, you were coming to give right. an offering or something. Right, exactly. Because yeah. they did, did they did they talk about at the altar that 
sometimes the people would actually place their, you know, sometimes priests placed it on the altar, but sometimes the people, or, or right. at least tied, made, helped tie it to the horns yeah. of the altar. Right. Yeah. So I guess it, it was permissible if you had business to be in the, in the outer court. You know? Right. It wasn't a, a social hang-up. Like yeah, the, right. The, yeah, you weren't going there for potluck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, the earthly sanctuary, the tent, you know, the tent of meeting was a place of worship where God met with the people, mm -hmm. but through the high priest. Right. You know, it wasn't actually them meeting him face to face. It was, everything was done through the high priest. Okay. And the holy place, the outer part, not the holy of holies, uh, the first section in verse 2 is a reference to the holy place where the lampstand and table of sacred bread were. Behind the second veil, or the curtain, was the Holy of Holies, the most holy place in which was the Ark of the Covenant. Now I want you to read ahead a note there because some people think that there's a contradiction here because in one place in Hebrews we, we hear that the altar of incense was in the holy place. Another uh, Scripture says that it was in the Holy of Holies. And so, actually, I think in 9, nine here is it where it said it was in the Holy of Holies. Okay. So, I want you to read that statement. Okay, no, no, uh, and verse 4 can give the impression of contradiction about the location of the golden altar of incense. Exodus and Levit Leviticus state that it was in the holy place in front of the veil. Hebrews places it behind the veil in the Holy of Holies. The word in Hebrews, thumi atirion, can be translated both altar of incense and censer. Hebrews 1.9 is showing the, sub, the substance of the Day of Atonement, so the word translated altar of incense should perhaps be translated censer, as it is, is in the King James Version. The golden censer taken into the Holy of Holies by the priest on the Day of Atonement. So, yeah, if you, if you have any confusion or, you know, you're uh, wondering about that, different versions translate it differently, but most likely it was the censer that uh, the high priest took in with him when he went into on the Day of Atonement mm -hmm. to offer the blood and so forth. And it basically it was just a censer that... Uh, that they would put the incense in and they would go in and swing it around for a, a fragrance up to the Lord in the presence of the Lord. Okay, so what did the Ark of the Covenant have in it? Uh, it had the um, the tablets of the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. and uh, representation of the pot of manna for God's supply to the people and uh, Aaron's rod that budded, I guess it's symbolic of his authority and uh, governance of God amongst the people. Right. And uh, what covered it? What was over top of it? Well, the, the cover, you know, the, the ark was, was wood overlaid with gold, but over top was called the mercy seat. Right. And um, it re represented, I think the word propitiation is the translation for mercy seat. And it it symbolized the mercy of God covering the demands of the law. That when the right. demands of the law within on the tablets were not followed through, the mercy seat gave a covering because disobedience disobedience was, was death actually. Right. So the mercy seat was a covering of the demands of the law. Not that the people weren't supposed to follow them, but when they couldn't follow them, mercy was needed to, to spare right. them. And the, the blood of atonement was uh, poured on the mercy on the, seat. Right on the mercy seat. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, so who went into the holy place? The holy of holies? No, just the holy place. Uh, the, whole, the, the priests priest could go in to, to do the daily function of uh, mm. the offering incense and, and trimming the, the lights, the, you know, making sure the oil was in the, right. the, the lampstand and 
place replacing the the showbread, the table of showbread. Right. It was just their daily functions. Or, and they did it every day, right? right. They were in there every day. Okay. So they were ministering to the Lord. Right. By taking care of those things. All right. And uh, how about the Holy of Holies? No, just the the ark, the ark of the covenant. Well, who could, who could go into the uh, holy? Ju of just the high priest, and only once a year on the day of atonement. Right. He and his purpose for being in there was it was the offer out offering of blood for the sins of the of the himself first, and then for the sins of the people of the nation. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So he had to offer for himself, and then the people of the nation. Okay. And we just talked about how. He could die if he didn't have everything uh, in order when he yeah. went into the presence of God. It's, ne it's never it's never stated, but I wonder if any priest actually was. You know, I think it had happened. That's why they ended up tying the rope around their foot. It talks about like Nadab and Abihu, how when they were disrespectful to God, that they they were taken, and Azza was taken when he touched the cart. But I'll never ever re reading about actually mm. them saying a, pe a priest was slain and right. they had to remove him. From, right, I don't know. But it could have happened. Yeah. yeah, I would. You would think because of other things that we read. I mean, usually uh, we do things in response to something that happened, and so the whole yeah. you know whole idea. I mean, we don't read it in the Bible anywhere. I don't believe either where they tied the rope around right. the ankle. Right. But you know, we we know that you know, through other history books mm -hmm. that that happened. <laughs> so, because, um, well, one thing is no one could ever enter the presence of God into the Holy of Holies without blood. Right. They had to have blood. Yeah. All right. Uh, so there were only offerings and sacrifices for unintentional sins. Did you notice that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but only for unintentional sins. There was no offering for deliberate sin. Anything that you did deliberately, you were, you know, you could not have an offering for that sin. You would be cut off from the rest of the people of God if you committed a deliberate sin. What would? How about the offerings, the sin offerings that you you, know, you brought animals for, and that what what type of sin was were they the you know? It was you know as far as I've read, you know, all of it was unintentional. It was things that you, I mean, there there could be different, you know, different things that you did, but you know, like you could accidentally kill somebody, right? You yeah, know. yeah. Or you know, you could, uh, um, you know somebody's cow straight and you took it in so it'd be like you know taking somebody else's property yeah which mm -hmm. would be a sin yeah really like 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 break breaking like the law of like touching a dead body and stuff like that that's a kind of yeah exactly you, need this, yeah. Uh, you needed an offering for that to, right. to, to truly cleanse yourself plus there was always that like the waiting period even after you offered it was like to, you know, the, the period of cleansing, you know, and then, then you could enter into normal activity again. Right. And so, you know, I mean, a lot of those different things, <clears throat> I'm just going by what the scripture says there. You know, scripture mm -hmm. says that, you know, these were offerings for unintentional sin. So, um, you know, I really, I wasn't back there, so I don't have the answers for, you yeah. know, the, the other type, you know, when, if you did intentionally sin, if you stole your neighbor's cow, instead of finding it wondering, if you actually, you know, went and stole it because you needed milk or whatever, um, you know, I don't, it doesn't say in this scripture in Hebrew that you could do something about that, right. you know, but uh, you have to wonder about it a little bit, you know. I mean, where, where's the mercy of if where's the mercy of God if but you know the thing was is in the Old Testament the Old Testament you know the law was giving given and if you obeyed it and you had to obey it completely you were blessed right. and if you broke it even broke one little thing of it you were cursed right. There was no gray area. It was all black and white. And so um, that's why we needed the new covenant. Yeah. That's why we needed the promise of the new covenant. 
so some of that application of justice too for certain sins was like stoning. You know, yeah, their life, right. their life was, you know, that 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 was part of the how the uh, the justice was applied. That those per people were caught, and God sp specifically said that they that they were to be stoned. You know, they yeah. were they were to lose their life were, over yeah. that transgression. You know, and to be cut off from the rest of the tribe. You know, to be sent out away. Yeah, that's as good as a death sentence too, because sure. you know, people depended on each other to survive. Yeah. It was very hard to survive as a loner. What was the blood that was used in this uh, Day of Atonement for this in the sacrifices? Where where did the blood come from? Oh, for an animals, specific animals that you know, even the other offering specific animals. You know, there was a. Uh, that the intricacies of I know there were specific animals for specific offerings. Right, exactly. I'm not sure about that, but it was right. goats and bulls and so lambs. So basically, it was, and, it was from different animals. Yeah, animals, different yeah, animals, different blood. animals. They they were the sacrifice. Right. And what we learn in uh, in nine and ten Hebrews nine and ten uh, about this blood, this sacrifice, and this blood. Okay, nine nine. It was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience so so it couldn't couldn't make him perfect couldn't make your conscience perfect right couldn't perfect you right, right. how about 10 1 for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of those things can never with these same sacrifices which they offered continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. So the blood, this blood, it's couldn't make us perfect. It's insufficient, yeah. 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 Could, could not make us perfect. Yeah. Uh, and in uh, couldn't clean, wipe away our sin and could not uh, clear our conscience. Yeah. All right. So in 10.4, it says it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away what? Sin. Sin, that's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So remember, this is all part of the Old Covenant. In essence, we're saying that it was impossible for the Old Covenant to take away sins. Right. You know, so it's impossible for the Old Covenant to take away sins, period. And it's impossible for the Old Covenant to make us perfect. Even if we walk in it, right. it doesn't make us perfect. Mm -hmm. Or those who worship this way, it can't make our conscience perfect either. Because mm -hmm. we're all this we're talking about a way of worship. This whole tabernacle we're talking about a this is all a, a way of worship. This under and under God's direction, mm -hmm. but it, still it was unable to perfect us to wash away our sins right. I guess right. the se severity of of what to understand sin is to you have to compare it to the holiness of God yeah he is so holy the slightest disobedience or the slightest transgression is an offense to his holiness so yeah. it, that's what why it had to be dealt with, you know. One, one of the pastors I used to uh, work with on a reservation, he had a plaque in his office, and it said, uh, "It said I petitioned the Lord for justice until I saw my reflection in His glory, and then I begged Him for mercy." Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Even, even yeah. just saying it gives a chills down my back. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 absolutely. So, okay, in nine ten. How long did it say these uh, sacrifices would be in effect? Uh, until the time of Reformation. All right. Yeah. So what does Reformation mean? That would be, be the bringing in of a, a, a better covenant that could, you know, I don't know if that's a good, but I'm, I'm, a scripture has a better covenant with better promises. Right. And it would be uh, because it was... Better perfect blood was shed, offered rather than imperfect blood, and in insufficient blood was offered right. instead of sufficient, and you know. Yeah, and well, basically, our study I think shows us that it. Uh, I think what it means is that uh, until the copy and the shadow are replaced by the reality, 
in the true the true yeah the true the reality yeah. the real thing yeah the real thing not the copy of or the shadow of but the real thing yeah okay that's interesting that you know the Ref <laughs> reformation we're familiar with it by the you know break from catholicism and, and but right but that's the reformation in god's eyes until what what his intentions were symbolized in are actually realized you right. know all the true the true promise the true right. tabernacle the true he heaven heaven on earth i mean you could say in some ways but you know it's just so uh in 9 11 and 12 how is the sanctuary of the new covenant described i'm just going to read it okay all right but christ came as high priest of the good things that come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation not with the blood of goats and calves but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all having obtained eternal redemption so it's describing it as uh, greater and more perfect the tabernacle of yeah. the new covenant right and made without hands it's not right. you know it's not the it's just it's not the, our creation right. it's god's it's reality god's reality just like you know the you know we read about them worshiping other gods made with hands our god wasn't made with hands yeah he's not made of wood or gold or silver or anything else he's real <clears throat> so what do we learn about jesus christ tell me some of the things that you put on your list uh okay i, I wrote them down and for the sake of not not you know missing things in that so that's why right, i'm yeah, reading i wrote i, wrote them I down wish too. They i want to hear yours i first. wish they they might be written on my heart but when they come up through here they they, lo they lose <laughs> they lose some of their their, their cloud right. okay. Right. jesus uh, appeared as a high priest he entered from heaven not from the, the, the earthly creation he entered with uh, with his own blood mm. he entered once for all uh, and, and entering, he obtained eternal redemption for us. He offered himself by the eternal spirit. He entered without blemish, sin, and, you know, a sinless life. Right. Entered the true tabernacle. Uh, he was manifested to put away sin. He appeared again the second time unto salvation. Um, it was to bear the sin of many. He came to do God's will, obedience. Mm. Uh, he sa he sat and he waited, and until he was vindicated after after his accomplishment, he sat at the right hand of God and he waited until he was absolutely vindicated of uh, all those that had offended 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 God and offended him in, in their rebellion and sin. Uh, he inaugurated a new and living way through the veil, his flesh. It, it, it was a, a new way to access something that was closed off before the separation between right. God and man. And um, so what, what, he did is, that he veil, what did that veil separate us from? From God's presence. Yeah. Yeah. And I find one last thing, but he has perfected forever the sanctified ones ones that were set apart for, for god's purpose in that he has he has perfected them forever that's why a christian the moment they close their eyes in death they can immediately be in the presence of god if we stay here the refining process can continue but because of the blood of christ being placed on us in the eyes of god we're perfected you know being perfected but still by the blood we are perfected that's 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 a hard thing to like it's well we're not finished yet if we remain no there's still the process of christ likeness coming but because of the blood you know it says by one offering is perfected ever for it's even that's exactly what the scripture says he is you know they are perfected forever those that are being 
sanctified, which is the process. If we stay alive, we're being sanctified. But right. since we're perfected in death, we can immediately be in his presence only be, only because of the blood. God right. sees, literally, God sees the blood on us. And that's never, why. Do you, do you yeah. ever enter into his presence now? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, in the secret place, or even yeah. even just in in public worship. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. I get lost. I'm yeah. I'm somewhere else, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, so, that's a good that's a good analogy. Yeah. We, we do it. We do enter in His presence while we are still yet living. We're we're there. Yep. He entered the greater and more perfect tabernacle in heaven. Right. Right. Uh, did he meet the regulations for entering into worship in the true tabernacle? Oh yeah. Yes, sin, sinless, a sinless life. But you know, what he, what he offered, his blood is, is was for everyone else. You know, so that they, they right. could they could enter too. He had you know, and I, I guess you could say as the well, sin well, bearer, only who could enter into the holy of holies, the high priest, the high priest, and he he was our high priest. He was our high priest, and 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 when the high priest entered into the holy of holies, what did he have to take? Blood. What did Jesus take? Precious, perfect blood. Yes. <laughs> so it, I think he met the regulations. Yes, he did. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So uh, he entered the Holy of Holies with his own blood, mm -hmm. precious blood. He entered with his own blood. Then if he entered with his own blood, okay, what did he become? The high priest in in this tabernacle, he, he became what, what, this what, offering, the sac of sacrificial offering. Yeah, yeah, he was the it, sacrifice. It was yeah, it was the symbol, the symbolic of his own life. You know, he right. entered it. Was his sacrifice total and acceptable? Yes, yes, yeah. it was the final. It was the final sacrifice, and no other yeah. sacrifices needed to be offered for. Yeah, nine twelve. He entered once and for all. Mm -hmm. Once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption, mm -hmm. like you said, mm -hmm. with that, uh, with that blood, eternal redemption. Uh, in nine twenty-five through twenty-eight and ten ten, he doesn't have to offer himself over and over. He did it once for all time to bear the sins of many, mm -hmm. for all of us. And he came to do God's will. So according to 10, 10, 12, and 14, how are we sanctified? You talked about being sanctified. How are we sanctified? Through the blood of Christ. And through the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. Offering of Jesus' sacrifice, it says. That's, mm -hmm. how, that's how we are being sanctified. Mm -hmm. It's through that, through faith in that. Okay, so how long are we perfected for? Forever. Yeah, forever. <laughs> Ten fourteen, he perfected us for all time. Those who are sanctified. Who's the mediator of the new covenant? Jesus. Nine fifteen. Yeah. He is the mediator of the new covenant. The new covenant. Yeah. All right. After offering one sacrifice for all sins for all time, what did he do? Sat Ten down, sat, sat down, down at the right hand of the Father. Right, and so when they said, I think goes on to say, wait, waiting till all his enemies will become his footstool. So, what do you think uh, sitting down is saying? What do you think Jesus was saying when he sat down? It's finished. It's accomplished. It's done. Yeah. Did the high priest ever sit down after they offered the, the blood? No. On atonement day. No. Why? Why didn't they sit down? Because there was still work to do. It was an incomplete. It's incomplete service. You know, the the, inten done. the yeah. intention of God was not yet accomplished. So, uh, which is better, the blood sacrifice of the old covenant, or Jesus Christ in the new covenant? Definitely the new covenant. You know, because the old sacrifices were were unable to take away sin. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. So how was God approached under the Old Covenant? With blood. Um, hopefully great fear and reverence. Only according to the law. You know, only according to the dictates of the law. And um, 
the, the, the actual people could be represented by the priests, but they themselves, you know, you know, they could offer offerings, they could, you know, uh, have blood applied for them, but it was, it was always just a covering and they would have to do it again. It would have to be repeated. So basically it was through tabernacle worship via the high priest. Right, right. And that's it, how, that's how they approached yeah, God. As, as their representative. And how do we approach God now? To the blood of Christ, through Christ, Christ, rep, you know, representation as our high priest, as through our mediator. Jesus, yeah. Yeah. Through Jesus. Yeah. Okay, Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. So that's how we enter into the presence of God. He made a new way for us right. to enter into the presence of God. And uh, as we talked about before, that split veil, which is his flesh. We go back to the beginning of our study and talk about the walk of death. Walk of, uh, walk of death. And they took the flesh of the animals and split it and walked in, walked through the center and uh, took the walk of death, death to self, death to independence from the partner. That's how we enter into the presence of God is, and it tells us over and over in scripture, through Jesus Christ is how we enter. So we, through him as the sacrifice, which we, we saw, he's the sacrifice and it's his blood that he offered for our atonement, which wipes away our sins but by, it's only by entering into covenant with him that we can enter into the presence of God with confidence. Yeah. With oh, confidence. How often I think that's missed, the, 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 the symb symbolism and the, the progression of that, you know. So back, very back with Abraham, there's, you know, the splitting, splitting of the animals and the mm -hmm. walking through, the, the mm -hmm. piercings and, and crushings mm -hmm. of Christ's flesh, and being able to enter in and then the, the ripping of the actual you know all tied together it's all you know yeah. it's just a progression of, of the intentions of god you know right. exactly that's amazing and i think that i think I, I myself miss that sometimes i'll, I'll read them <laughs> as individual things and mi missing that they they're intricately woven together yeah. they're speaking of the same thing each one of them right yeah. well yep well, in verse 21, it says, He is the great high priest over the house of God. What's the house of God? House of God would be, you know, it would be the first, literally the true house of God would be the, the heavenly tabernacle, the perfect tabernacle. But he could also be, say, like all the the, the combined believers of God, the family of God, the, the children of God, of God yeah. combined believers in, in Christ. And other scripture tells us that we've been adopted. Right. We are adopted. We are his children. We are his sons and daughters. Yeah. Yeah, because so, they talked about the house of David and the house of Saul. Now, the house of God is, is all the true believers right. in Christ. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's our, our great high priest. I guess, I guess you could say initially... The first house of God would just been Israel because they were the only one given the promises and that. But then it then God opened it up, you know. So when did Christ. we read? When did we read about Him opening it up? Way back in the Abrahamic covenant. Yeah, yeah. That's when He decided to open it up to the rest of us because He promised a seed that would be a blessing to all the all nations. nations. Yeah, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So where does Hebrews tell us that Jesus is now? Still at the right hand of the Father. Yeah. You know, sitting in heaven at the right hand of the Father. In the heavenly tabernacle, the yeah. real one. Right. The real tabernacle, the real high priest. What What do you What do you think is a, a symbolic representation? Because in, in the heavenly tabernacle is, is basically, you could say it's like the throne, the throne of God sitting in his mm -hmm. throne. And what... What do you think was symbolic in the old of being the throne of God? Just just the ark, his presence? Yeah, there? I think be just it's, 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 yeah, it's basically not, we're not really looking at the throne. We're looking at the presence the of presence, God. The presence, yeah. So Jesus sitting at the right, right hand of God, ministering in the true tabernacle. Is there any need for the copy or shadow anymore? No. 
No, I think it's, I think that it's worded that the, the, you know, the old has become passing away or has become obsolete, you know. It served its purpose, but it was it was substituted with a more right. a more perfect covenant, a more right. perfect yeah. Yeah. So looking at this uh diagram again uh of the earthly tabernacle and the furniture in it and what it took for the people to come into the presence of God for atonement of sins, would you say it was fulfilled by Jesus? Let's just go over the diagram. First of all, uh, the diagram says, okay, here's the door into the outer court. And Scripture tells us that Jesus is the door. Right. And then there's the altar of brass, or the brazen altar, some people call it. Jesus is our sacrifice. We right. just talked about yeah, that. Yeah, the Lamb of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the brass laver. Scripture tells us that we can be cleansed daily through the Word, yeah. washing of the Word. It, 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 he also told one of the disciples, you are already clean by the Word that i spoken over you, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. And then we got the uh, the outer court. Uh, that, and then we enter into the holy place. And there's the candlestick. Jesus is the light of the world. Mm -hmm. There's the table of showbread. Jesus is the bread of life. There's the altar of incense. Jesus is our intercessor. The incense represented the fragrance of our prayers going up to the, to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he's our intercessor. And then we have the Ark of the Covenant. And the high priest only entered there once a year to meet with God. And Jesus has met with God once and for all, for all time. And the veil separating the two, and we said that was Jesus' flesh, separated the veil. So, did Jesus fulfill this? Yes. Fully and completely, yeah. Yes. So our sacrifice is necessary anymore? Not 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 for forgiveness of sin. Right. All right. What was the law written on in the old covenant? Tablets of stone. Tablets of stone. What was the law written on in the new covenant? Our hearts. Yeah. Yeah, it's written on our hearts. So uh one was uh external and one was internal. All right. All right, I want to read Ezekiel eleven, nineteen and 20. And I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. And I will take the heart of stone out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances to do them. Then they will be my people and I will be their God. So you notice he's taken the heart of stone out of us. Mm -hmm. The old covenant was written on stone. And he's putting in a heart of flesh. So the old covenant was external. The new covenant, the law, is internal. Mm -hmm. All right. We see that the new covenant makes the old covenant obsolete. Right? Mm -hmm. We've talked about that. Like it says in Hebrews 8.13. But what about the Abrahamic covenant? Is it now obsolete as well? No, not no, not trying to no, because no, it was an everlasting That's covenant. Right. <laughs> That's right. I had to think it through. No, it was promised to be e eternal. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the old covenant never was. The old yeah. covenant never said this was an eternal covenant. Yeah. It was here for a time, yeah. a period. Yeah. So, Galatians three seventeen and eighteen. What I am saying is this, the law, which came 430 years later, does not invalidate a covenant previously ratified by God, so as to nullify the promise. For if the inheritance is based on law, it is no longer based on a promise. But God has granted it to Abraham by means of a promise. Mm -hmm. So right there in Galatians, it's talking about this very idea. And it's, if you read Galatians, the whole chapter 3, it's, it's a good read. Mm -hmm. uh, 
<laughs> but basically it's saying that you know this promise was forever it was promised for ender to all his descendants do you realize i think we talked about this before that uh abraham was wasn't a jew when he left uh, uh, yeah. in, when he left his hometown and uh went out by faith but that uh it, it was you know later because of his belief that well basically uh, Abraham became a Jew by faith yeah okay he was a Jew by faith so uh, I'm going to read Galatians 3 6 through 14 even so Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness therefore be sure that it, it is be sure that it is those who are of faith who are sons of Abraham. Mm. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith mm. <laughs> preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham saying, all the nations will be blessed in you. So then those who are of faith are blessed with Abraham the believer. For as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not abide by all the things written in the book of the law to perform them. <clears throat> now that no one is justified by the law before God is evident. For the righteous man shall live by faith. However, the law is not of faith. On the contrary, he who practiced them shall live by them. Mm -hmm. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Mm -hmm. Having become a curse for us. So it is, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Mm -hmm. So we are sons of Abraham because we're of faith. Mm -hmm. Because we believe. So that makes just like Abraham was a Jew by faith, we are sons and daughters of God by faith. Mm -hmm. And so we are sons of Abraham you and I. Mm -hmm. And so the promise was forever to all his descendants. So whether we were grafted in or born in, we are still his descendants and mm -hmm. still part of the inheritance of those promises. So how is uh, Abrahamic covenant related to the new covenant? The promises, promises uh, still apply and um, is open open to all those, you know, the, that are of the household, you know, uh, uh, they're, they're included in, in, like, you know, keeping keeping the promises of God. And um, well, basically, no, number one thing is that Abraham was promised the seed. And Jesus Christ is the seed. Yeah. yeah. So the two covenants are connected just by that. Yeah. And then, you know, as you were saying, all the promises that were given to Abraham are available to us as uh, descendants. We inherit the promise. Yeah. If we have the faith, if we believe, if we've entered into covenant with Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, do you think we need to approach God through the earthly tabernacle anymore, this way? Um, no, no. I mean, we, we're still called to go to church and that, but that's just for worship. That's not for you know. Right. We can we can do. We can do the work, you know. I guess that sometimes whether we're called to be pre, you know, priest, priest unto God, and too, but but priests sort of are our own. Our own lives yeah, in well, that because yeah we we don't uh, you know we don't uh, stop assembling 
you know, we don't, you know, it's not that we can, you hear some people say, you know, well, it's just me and God. Yeah. You know, and I think that's, that's incorrect. That's not what God intended. No. God intends for us to, you know, not to forsake the assembly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I guess the question I was asking is, is the way that they did it here in the earthly temple, do we need to do the same? Do we need to continue to do the same no. thing? Do we need to go to the priest? I'm, I'm stepping on some toes. Go to the Father mm-hmm. and have him pray for us. Yeah. Just, just to believe, to believe in what Jesus did was sufficient for right. you know it does not have to be done again. And we go go to the Father, for, you know, through Christ, you know, in in His name, and and you could always also say, which I do pray sometimes, you know, Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus and by His blood. Right. That I, that I understand that that's why I can come into Your presence because of the blood of Christ. You know. And so that's how we approach God. Mm-hmm. It's through Jesus, right? Yeah. We don't have to go through all these steps. We don't have to take a sacrifice and yeah. have the high priest offer it for us to atone for us so that we can come into his presence. All we have to do is go to Jesus. Yeah. Go to God the Father through Jesus. Yeah. Through what he's done for us. All right. Well, I want to quickly review what we... Uh, yeah, you know, I, I just said what I had once. Uh, I think a lot of people get tripped up about what's still applicable, what still applies from from, from the old and that. But it's uh, I think it's Romans ten four. It says, and "This is this is the part I think." And this one, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Trusting in the law for your righteousness, for your justification, or right. ne- never come through the law. But the, uh, some of the applications of the law, you know, especially the Ten Commandments, are all very still valid. We're, right. we're not to kill. We're yeah. not to commit adultery. We are to honor our parents. That's still in place, but I think you get tripped up. Why are you going through the law if you're doing it for righteousness? If you're doing it for, <laughs> right. for forgiveness and cleansing, no, it, that you you won't find it. Christ is the end of that. But there's still applications, and some of the things of the law are still very valid. Well, we've talked know. about it before. You know, if we're not doing those things because we think that we can obtain righteousness by, you know, obeying the law, right? Then right. we're still under the law. Right, we're still under the law, and we're we're not going to make it. But when we come into the covenant of grace through Jesus Christ, because of our love for Him, we want to obey those things in the commandments. Right. We want to obey Him. Right. You know, there's scripture. I think it's is it in John? I don't know. It's in one of the Gospels where basically Jesus, you know, says, you know. If you uh, obey me, you know, if you're truly my friend, you're you're going to obey me. Yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, it's because of our love for him and what he's done for us mm-hmm. that we do those things. We right. want to. We want to be changed. You know, it's it's not we're not doing them because, you know, we think we're going to earn a paycheck. We're doing it because we want to bless the lover of our souls, right? Yeah. And 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 when we we don't, <clears throat> to be like quick to confess that, to confess that that we failed and that you know and then right. then and he's quick to forget. Yeah, and then the blood the blood covers. It's not just right. a temporary. It's a new, a new refreshing, a new cleansing. You know that 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 shortcoming still. You know. I guess he he knows we're capable of, and he made provision for for the forgiveness of that sin, that that, that cleansing. You know, where where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Right. Yeah. So does that mean because we got grace, we should just go ahead and sin? No, Paul said, God forbid. God forbid. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So I want to quickly review why we don't need to uh, enter the earthly tabernacle anymore. Mm-hmm. There's no need for a copy or shadow anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesus sat at the right hand of God, and he's sitting there now in the true tabernacle, 
So we have reality in Jesus. We don't need the shadow or the you know the the copy because we have the reality. Um, you can see that in Hebrews ten twelve. We have no need for a symbol. All the symbols have been fulfilled by Jesus. We can see that in the temple in Hebrews nine eight and nine. Uh, no need to go through a high priest because Jesus is our high priest. We can go through him. Uh, and Jesus provides us access to the Father. And he is the high priest in Hebrews 9.11. No need for sacrifices. Jesus has obtained eternal redemption. Mm -hmm. He was the sacrifice. Hebrews 9.12-14. through 14. No need for the law written on external tablets. Because we have the law written on our hearts. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 16. No need to approach God through the tabernacle because God is approached through Jesus. Hebrews mm -hmm. 9, 24. And so because all this is true, what are we exhorted to do in uh, 10, 19 through 22? Yeah, uh, come with boldness for the throne, the throne of God, the, you know, because of grace and mercy, and and because of the blood of Christ. Yep, sincere heart, yeah. a full assurance of faith. Yeah. So what else in uh, twenty-two through twenty-five? Or I'll just read twenty-two through twenty-five. Let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds not forsaking our own assembling together. It is as is the habit of some, <clears throat> but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So we're exhorted to draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, to hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, and to consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds and not forsaking the assembly, assembling together, and encourage one another. Because all this is true, we can enter into the presence of God with confidence every day, mm. all the time, anytime we want. Mm -hmm. And we should. Yes, definitely. Mm. We don't need a copy or a symbol anymore because Jesus is the real thing. We got the real thing, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is the real thing. Well, Carl, anything you want to add? No, it's been, been a real eye-opener. Cl clarified some things I've had issues with for a long time just really couldn't get the connection and through, through the teaching and that made made, made com complete sense seeing the the intricacy of God what 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 uh, weaving his his plan and his intentions for man you know and just just how so much the the old is uh can't be ever separated from the new. It was like right. it, it was so purposefully done that once once it accomplished what it was to, it still had a validity to it that it, it can the results can still be seen. You know, yeah. even though we we will really need to know how how we are to respond and how we are to react to certain things that you know that what what is still valid and what we're what we're still trusting in right you know 
before they, they trusted in their working of the law, and which was futile. Yeah. Now, if they trust in the workings of Christ, they're right, right on, yeah. right on target with the will of God for for us. You know, Amen. Just, something really, really struck me is is like the crucialness of obedience. You know, when they talked about, you know, really comparing the process of the old the old covenant and, and the sacrificial system and that, that was done and thinking about how many millions and millions and millions of animals were slain in that and that it was it was just leading up but God didn't have a desire in doing that, but his desire was for what Christ was going to do, mm-hmm. that being sent into the world, then it was just all the obedience of Christ, all his obedience, all his desire that that I came. You know, it, it talks about in First John says about he he was manifest to take away our sin. He was manifest to destroy the works of the evil one. But in that, I saw he was manifested to obey the will of his father. And in an obedience, it opened everything up. It opened up eternal redemption. It opened up forgiveness of sin. It opened up coming into right relationship. It opened up access to the presence of God Mm -hmm. just by his obedience. Yes. And and, and in, in his obedience, he could sit back and see the ramifications of God's love for the whole world. You know, his obedience answered that call to God's mm. love for the whole world and 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 that he was that promise that someone would come along and would be the blessing right. to all nations and it was only because of his obedience so to me that 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 they talked back to me how crucial and how beneficial and the resulting effect of my obedience to the word mm. of God mm. and, and 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 having a loyalty and having a uh, separation also to God, you know, right. I'm I'm His, I'm His property, <laughs> I'm purchased, I'm purchased yeah. with precious yeah. blood, yeah. and so I you can't, are your own, right, right? I cannot conduct my life like I am my own. I'm for Him, and I'm for others. And then I take third, third, you know, I take the bronze in, <laughs> in that competition. He gets the gold and others gets the silver. And if, if there's anything left, I take the bronze, but I'm, I'm not here for, for, for me, you know. And that, that was something that really drew out, you know, seeing the, the completeness of what he did and, and all the implications of it. And it's because, you know, that, those, those scriptures when they talked about that God, God didn't desire that other stuff. That whole system was necessary, but he he just uh, he desires an obedient heart, a, a willing heart, a, a, a loving heart, a, a, a one that will return love voluntarily just to, for love's sake, not because to earn anything right. or gain anything or prove anything. Yeah. Love for love's sake, and you know what he did was love for love's sake, and our response to him should be love to, for love's sake, and and also, you know, I guess in Jesus' statement about he who has done it to the least of these, my brother, he's done it unto me. That is all, all our acts of kindness and all of that. That that that's for God. Yeah. Our sin is against God. David said, "Against thee." The only have I sin. It all reflects back right. to how we respond and how we conduct ourselves in in the presence of God yeah. and in what in what Christ did. And you, you stated before it's a be if, if if you love me, you know, do what I tell you to do. Do my word. Right. Do, do, you know, <laughs> obey my commands. That's yeah. the ultimate. If you're doing that, then I know you love me. You don't have to prove love to me. I know you love me if you're doing. And it, that's frustrating sometimes because like w- when I fall. I'm thinking I'm not loving Christ sufficiently, but there's a hope in that because the love we have for Him is given to us, right. shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. So we're all, we're even given what we're required to <laughs> to give. You know, give back, we don't have yeah. to come come up with it. Yeah. We're given. You know, the generosity of God is just so amazing. You know. Well, I'm glad that uh, that you know you've received all that. It's one of my hopes in doing these studies. The study in covenant basically is, uh, I hope that it begins to bring all the other scripture 
around it, and you see how it's all connected. Oh, yeah. I mean, it ties every, it together. Every, every, everything yeah. is, is just really connected, and mm -hmm. uh, it uh, makes other scripture, to me, it made a lot of other scripture just come to life and, and you know, suddenly say, oh, that's what he's talking yeah, about, you know. Is. That's what he's talking about because, yeah. um, you know, the whole thing, is, it's all around covenant. It's all around relationship yeah. is what it's all about. And, you know, covenant is our relationship with God, with the Trinity, with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's, uh, it's all about our relationship and it's about covenant. It's our covenant with them, and um, it's just, uh, it's amazing. I hope that it's been uh, a blessing to you folks, too. I hope that uh, um, it will cause Scripture to come alive to you, and you'll be able to start to tie things together. And uh, not just, uh, not just, with our covenant relationship, but with all the things that we read in the Bible, that it would just, uh, your relationship with Jesus Christ. And remember that your relationship with Jesus Christ isn't just uh, tied just to Him. It's tried to, tied to God the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. And I want to encourage you, uh, go ahead and read uh, Galatians chapter 3 and just see how it ties in with everything that we've already learned. God bless you.